flew through this book and was like, I'm mad. Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking about the books that have completely changed my life. And when I say that they have completely changed my life, this is not an exaggeration. I am not someone to use clickbaity titles or exaggerated titles. These are books that have literally changed the course of my life after reading them and continue to change the course of my life. I actually don't have a physical copy of the first book because I have given it to a friend and then when I repurchase it, I end up giving the book to other people. The book is Tiny Beautiful Things by Cheryl Strayed. In this book, you read letters from people from all walks of life with totally different life experiences and you find yourself having compassion and empathy for these other people and in turn having more compassion and empathy for yourself. When I discovered this book, I was in a place in my life where I was really confused. I had just come out and you know, I think a lot of people see coming out as like a finish line, like you did it, yay, you're yourself, woohoo. Um, for me, it was definitely a huge milestone moment, but in my life, it was just the beginning of this deeper self exploration. And I realized that I had a lot of shame to work through, a lot of trauma and pain, and I had a lot of healing to do. And coming out was really just the first stepping stone for me. And so I started reading this book and it made me realize that I wasn't alone in how I felt. And so often, you know, in life, I feel like you don't always hear the things that you need to hear in those moments. And this book, Cheryl Strayed's Advice, those were the words that I needed to hear. And to hear her saying them to someone else, um, you know, who, was often experiencing one of the most confusing, painful, difficult moments of their life was so incredibly comforting. It made me feel like there was hope for me, that I wasn't just this lost cause of a person and that there were other people out there who were also struggling and that there were people out there who cared and who were compassionate and who wouldn't be judgmental of the shame the pain, the trauma that I was harboring. And that was the book that got me into therapy. That was the book that made me realize there are people out there who care and can help. Now I've been in therapy regularly and it has completely changed me, my life, my relationships with other people. And it all started because of this book. The next book, I have a physical copy of it right here. This book is called The Dance of Anger. It's written by Harriet Lerner, and it's specifically focused on anger within women. I think the topic of anger and women is something that is starting to kind of rise to the surface of our culture just a little bit. I think people like Rebecca Traster are really starting to talk about this in depth and in a more public way. But this book is actually quite old. I think there's so many things that ring true today that so many of us can relate to. Because I know I read this book and I was like, this book is me. Was she using me as an example for this book? Tiny Beautiful Things got me into therapy and then my therapist gave me this book. We were talking about something and I remember her saying, you know, how do you feel about that? And I couldn't say that I was mad and it was just so simple that I was just mad and angry, but I couldn't say it because I had been brought up in a culture and a household where anger was absolutely unacceptable and just not an option for a nice good girl like me. My therapist told me to read this book and I flew through this book, showed up at my next session and was like, I'm mad. I literally did that. I was like, I am mad. And it felt like such a huge release and it allowed me to explore 
what my anger had been trying to tell me for all of these years. I think words are extremely powerful and reading about how our language, so much of our angry language is directed at women was so eye-opening to me because it shows how women are really attacked and how we are often punished for expressing any kind of emotion but especially anger we are brought up often to be nice good quiet not engaging in conflict kind of girls that's who were taught to be, especially for me because I did grow up in a household where I was being raised by two Asian women. And in Asian culture, this is especially true. Like you just do what you're told. You don't try to stand out. You stay quiet. You just do what you need in order to just get by and survive. What she talks about is that anger is actually something that is necessary to feel and to understand. She says that anger is a signal for the necessity of change. That is all it is. When I think about all of the times in my life when I have been angry, whether it's over something really big or really small, it's always because there was some kind of change that needed to happen that wasn't happening in that moment. So just understanding what anger is at its core has made me better in arguments because I understand the change that I am wanting. And what I also love in this book is she then goes into very specific examples where you read the story of two people engaged in some kind of conflict and then she reviews it afterwards and breaks it all down. And that was so incredibly helpful because you see these different dynamics and yes, a lot of the couplings because there are romantic couplings in here, they are heterosexual, but the dynamics are still often the same. I do think there is a specific dynamic between men and women, so that is really helpful to read about in here. But she also says, you know, if you are in a different kind of pairing, these things still often come up. And I have found this book to be so extremely helpful because one, I allow myself to be angry. I listen to what it's trying to tell me, AKA the change that needs to happen. And then when I know what that change is, then I'm able to communicate that more effectively to whoever it is I'm in a conflict with. And that has made all the difference in my relationships. Just understanding anger alone. It has made me closer to my mother. It has made me closer in my romantic relationship. It has made me closer to all of my friends and it has also helped my professional relationships as well. It has literally helped every relationship in my life. It makes me realize that my anger is valid and that I can do something with it, that it is a really powerful force and catalyst for change. The last book, <laughs> coming out of anger, I got a little angry there thinking about, you know, all the ways in which women are held down. So <laughs> I'm just going to breathe for a second. <laughs> the last book is called The Artist's Way. The way that the book is laid out is like a workbook. You read a chapter, then at the end of that chapter, there are tasks to do. And there are 12 chapters total in the book. So this is in a way similar to a 12 step recovery program. This book is about recovering this part of yourself that you've like pushed down, you've told yourself is not good enough. Other people have told you is not good enough, but she really starts out strong with having you go over all of the horrible things that you tell yourself and all of the horrible things that have been said to you that have held you back. So that is kind of where this book starts. And then she goes into, you know, how do you navigate 
those thoughts. I talked about some of the exercises in my self-love video, but what I have found through this process, which I did in a group by the way, so I am in a book club, an Artist Way book club. I have seen every single person in this group grow so much just in the few months that we had been doing the artist way together. So we met almost every single week and we would recap the chapter we read, we would talk about our own personal experiences, what we were going through, we would do tasks together, we would check in on morning pages and our artist dates with each other. Not only have I seen every single person grow, I have seen myself grow. I have become more daring and more curious and I think more fun too, <laughs> um, less cynical about the world and I feel connected to something that is larger than myself. And she goes over things that everybody goes through, you know, negative self-talk, worrying about money, having compassion for yourself. I will say she uses the word God a lot in this book, which I know may throw some people off. I know for me, I was like, know if I want to get into a God book. I have a complicated religious upbringing from like half of me being Buddhist and the other half being Christian. I've kind of like avoided God up until now. What she's referring to is not a religious God. She's really referring to a higher power, whatever that means for you. I want to say that that's a thing and to also say that it's worth a try because I was really scared of the God part and then I surrendered and I let the book take me on a ride and I would say after chapter four is where I really let go because up until then I was pretty resistant and just kind of going through the motions but chapter four she makes you not read for a week and I was pissed <laughs> I was so mad like everyone in my life knew how mad I was after that I really let go and everything shifted in a really really big way for me. I think it's pretty obvious that like all three of these books have like drastically changed my life and I'm not kidding about that. Um, and I'm actually going to be doing something that I've done before, once before on Instagram. I am going to be hiding all three of these books around New York City and doing a little book scavenger hunt. I will let you know all of the specifics on Instagram so you can follow me there when I'm doing it, where the book is hidden, what book is hidden where, all of that will be on Instagram, but I'll also leave an update in the comment section of this video as well. Because last time I did this with a book, People really loved it, and I have to say one of my favorite things was all of the stories people shared. It was something that people really requested I do again. So I'm doing it again, and this time with three books. Last time it was a like a fun, fluffy read. These are life-changing books for me, so I'm excited about that. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I will have more videos coming your way and make sure to hit the bell button so you get notified when I post videos because I post every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So that is the day that you know I will be here in my little internet space posting a video on YouTube. So with all that being said, I will see you next Friday. Bye.